a good measure. Hoorah! Let's go check it out. As you guys can see, the accuracy isn't wonderful. I was aiming about right here and just getting, as you guys remember, I was shooting relatively quickly, just getting a flash sight picture and just nailing this thing. And the, the, the dot in here is, I'm going to say is roughly that size from 100 yards, roughly. Um, so you're still talking about a heart-sized group, one, two, three, four, five, and then there's a headshot. Um, M193, the, the ammo that I'm shooting out of this gun, is horribly um, inconsistent. However, we're shooting for a minute of bad guy, or as my friend Ross says, minute of body. So I'm not looking for MOA, I'm not looking for pinpoint accuracy, I'm looking for the ability to hit this guy several times. Remember, I'm prone at 100 yards. For, for the initial couple shots, he's going to have difficulty figuring out where I am. Um, I've already hit him twice at that point. Um, unless he begins moving, I'm going to hit him several more times. And remember, this is a very specific aiming point. I'm aiming at his heart. If I'm aiming at this, or let me rephrase this, if I'm aiming at his heart, but I start shooting quickly, I'm still hitting this guy. I'm still changing his behavior. I'm still making him rethink his present behaviors in life. Because that's the discussion that goes behind the 7.5 inch AR-15. Many times people want to talk about accuracy and they want to talk about dependability. And I go, well, yeah, accuracy and dependability is there. I've routinely said, if you could find me a way to have mil-spec waterproof, I mean, let's call it for what it is, pretty much waterproof 22 caliber ammunition, I'd go to a Ruger 1022 in a breakdown uh, with that um, thing from Magpul that just breaks down to like that size and it just slips in a backpack. But you can't because 22 caliber by its very nature is very porous to water. Well, guess what? That's 22 caliber, 0.223, 5.56 millimeter, but this stuff is waterproof. And so you're talking about a rifle that, yeah, you've given up a lot of velocity, sure, but remember, you're still talking about 22 caliber performance, which is more than enough to alter the behavior of bad guys, hunt wild game. Remember, this is a get home gun. So hunt wild game if you need to. It is a small package that gets the job done for what the job is. If I'm talking about home defense, bug out, I want a longer barrel. I want precision. I want pinpoint accuracy. I want to be able to spot someone, track them, and if I need to, hit them in a very specific spot. Um, when it comes to the, the hard sights on this gun, they're Magpul and Bus Pros. In fact, you know what, let's step back to 50 and show you that. All right, we're roughly at 40. Um, I wanted to go a little further, but I wanted to stay in line with these guys, and I'll show you why in just a second. Um, with, the, with the hard sights folded up and the optic turned off, okay. For those that don't know, when you pinch both sides up and down on an RMR, the, the, uh, the increase and reduce buttons on an RMR, and you pinch and hold for like five seconds, it just totally goes to sleep. So now it's out, and what I've got up is the peep sight and the front side post. Now before I show you this, it bears noting that when I had my LASIK surgery, I lost a great deal of my close-up vision. And the sight radius on this thing is horrendous, okay? I mean, it's... So, for me to see things clearly, I've got to have them about right here, which is why my friends laugh when I'm on my, on my phone and I'm like, you know, reading text messages like this. But it works, because what it has given me is 2010 vision, which is like binoculars, it's amazing. But close up accuracy, for, uh, for especially for aiming, is kind of a crap show. But it is, I want to show you, it's still good enough to get the job done. So we're at 40 yards, so basically snap the gun up, and what I'm doing is I'm doing um, pumpkin on a fence post. So I've got my I've got my front sight post, my rear aperture, my front sight post, and that circle, that 10-inch circle in the middle of the chest is sitting on the, on the fence post. But what I do is I take the front sight post and I kind of sink it into that white dot. And what you get is this effect. All right, let's go take a look. Actually, I started walking off and realized I wanted to show you this. Um, I can tell you from just standing here, that's three decent hits well inside of the size of the heart, just off the cuff standing. Um, when you're talking about moving shot to shot, 
with a gun this short, you have what, what I call low moment of inertia. Well, it's not, not, not what I call it. What it is, is low moment of inertia. Meaning when the gun transfers from this position to that position, there isn't a lot of oop, oop, like that. It's basically snap it up, fire, rotate, fire, because you don't have a lot of weight out front doing this to you. And it comes in handy when you're talking about getting snap sight pictures on small targets. And this is going to be an edge hit. Boom! Smeared around right past it. So it's something that is doable. Now I've got to find all my casings. It's something that is doable. Um, but for the most part, I can run off optic whenever possible. And for those that don't know, RMRs do auto dim. So when you go into night mode, the, the dot dims way down. Um, if you stand this rifle up in a corner, of a house for home defense, take a rag and just throw it over the optic. That way, the optic goes to sleep as much as possible because it's, it's in a dark environment covered by a rag, but as soon as you were to bring the gun up, that rag would just, and you want the rag leaning more to one side than the other, so that when you bring the gun up, the rag's own weight drags it off, like a, like a triangle bandage. A military triangle bandage is great for this because the fabric is relatively dense, so it's gonna block a lot of light but the fabric is also very smooth and the weight of this will drag it cleanly off the gun. Anyways, let's look at the accuracy. So hastily taking shots really quick. This one is worth showing you because what I had here, and you can already see what I'm talking about. I did it earlier and there's one of the smears and there's the other. What you get is the round and you can actually see the shape of the bullet right there. What you get is that round is coming like this and so essentially my aiming view is was about like that so i had a shot this oblique shot the round ends up harmlessly over here in the trees you can see it actually cut one of the branches it ends up harmlessly in the ground harmlessly in the ground but um your ability to pick specifically where you're going to hit even with hard sights is doable on a shorty like this. Every time I get this gun out, you guys get in the comment section and you start making comments that tell me that you guys want more content on 7.5 than anything else. Why? Because the 7.5 is a wild card. Everybody thinks it's inaccurate. Everybody thinks it's, um, uh, it's not trustworthy. It's this, it's that. I've heard the rounds will keyhole at... Um, some guy actually said to me, I've heard the rounds will keyhole at 10 yards. Keyholing, for those that don't know, is when... Let's imagine that this is just a bullet. So. This is a bullet in flight. And what you're talking about, what he's talking about is, instead of the bullet flying straight in and striking the target, he's saying that the round starts to tumble like this. And uh, upon impact, it's impacting like that. Well, you guys saw from that target over there what an actual streaked round looks like. And that's, by the way, guys, that's what keyhole rounds look like. They literally have this distinctive sweat and it makes this very distinctive shape of a bullet smacking that target. In fact, I've got some rounds at home, uh, some 300 blackout rounds at home that actually keyholed onto a plate a few years ago. And it was so interesting that I picked them, off the picked them up off the ground and slipped them in my pocket. Um, one side of the round was just flattened violently. And it was, it was almost as if somebody had taken the bullet and just sanded a portion of it down. I mean, it was just this pristine round with one side flattened. So, um, I'm the guy who years ago would go to training and clean everybody's clock in 100 yards with a seven and a half with hard sights, not even an optic, not even an optic, just hard sights. It's doable if you take the front sight and you put it all the way out here. Um, I'm going to do a, a detailed video on this, but briefly what I'm going to tell you is this. What I'm dealing with here is an eight inch handguard, not a seven inch handguard. This is a muzzle device. This is a, a comp, K-O-M-P, that I designed and sold years ago. They're not made anymore. The second close uh, quality um, muscle device that I would tell you to get is the KK Industries. And it's a fairly good knockoff of this. The, the geometry of the cone inside is not the same. This geometry is very specific. I designed this for performance, truly for performance. And it does a really nice job <clears throat> of allowing that round to escape. It basically acts like a gigantic crown and it allows that round to cleanly escape the explosive forces before they come back in and flick the back of the bullet. So what I, what I found is, 
If I'm shooting uh, Mark 262 out of a gun like this, the accuracy out of it is like, it's just unreal. And people see the performance that comes out of this and they go, wait, 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 wait. You just did that with a seven and a half inch barrel? Yeah. Because guys, you've been lied to for years. Seven and a half inch AR-15s are really capable. And I used to build these guns and I sold stacks of these. And this was the most popular build. I mean, I sold more of these than 10 threes, 11 threes, 11 fives, and 10 fives compared. It was seven five, seven five, seven five, seven five. Every time I blinked, another seven five was going out the door. Why don't I do it anymore? Because the dynamics of the AR-15 market have changed. With the, uh, with the, the, the brace, the brace band thing. Everybody lost their mind. Oh, I don't want a short barrel anymore. Well, that kind of fell flat on its face, right? So now braces are legal. Guys, if you're going to do a shorty, do a shorty. Just just get it done, okay? Get it done. Remember, guys, it comes down. To, it doesn't matter what you have in your hand. Eventually, they're going to get to coming after everything. It's better to have the capability now, right? So. Um, that's what I got for you on this video. I'm doing a whole series and I'm going to release all of them at once. Well, not all at once, but within just days of each other to give you guys the knowledge on the 7.5. I'm, basically, I'm going to give you guys as much knowledge that I can get into these videos and I'm going to give you all of the knowledge that I have about 7.5. And 7.5 has, has been my bread and butter for years. Um, I'm the originator of the Spikes Tactical Compressor. Um, this video right here is me presenting the compressor at SHOT Show, I forget what SHOT Show this was, 2010, 2011, something like that. Um, so I am, I am the one of the co-inventors of the compressor. Um, I came up with the original idea for it. Um, the bar rail, the big ass rail, was my idea, let me, hang on, let me finish, in conjunction with um, Tom Miller and Glenn Seekins and the three of us dreamed up the bar rail to fit the can inside. The original compressor, which is this one that you see me shooting here, had a device on the end called a Warthog, and it was great because it allowed you to dial pressure up and down. This particular one has an adjustable gas block that just slows the gun down. Um, all we were trying to do was slow the gun down. Spikes Tactical went off in a direction with a compressor that I disagreed with. I don't care. Whatever. Um, there's, there's a huge backstory there. I don't care. I've moved on. Um, this is the compressor in its original idea. This is it right here. This device is made of aluminum, so when this bumps into somebody, you're not taking a chunk out of a person because this cools very, very fast because of the fluting that I put into the device. Um, and I know right now people are losing their mind because I'm putting my hand in front of them. Guys, grow up. Really? Yeah. Oh. Whatever. Hot pockets! Okay, so, um... I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you guys all the knowledge that I have on seven and a half. This has been seven and a half has been my thing forever. It's just been I'm the guy who has tested body armor with seven and a halves and went, that's interesting. Didn't expect that to happen. Bullets were going through body armor like it was not, like it wasn't even there. Out of these shorties, right? So um, vehicle classes, rounds would go through vehicles more consistently with a seven and a half than anything else. I think it's time on target. I'll cover that in another video. But that's it. Um, thank you guys so much for your sling purchases, for your um, donations to the channel to keep this channel truly independent. If you guys knew how often I am being hit up by manufacturers sending who want to send me garbage, so much junk, optics, lights, lasers, doodads, ticky bobs, adapters, slings, ironically. And I go, no, 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 no. I'm not interested. I want this channel to be the place where you guys can come and get honest truth delivered to you in an unfettered manner and just laid out on the table. So with that, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one. And a headshot just for good measure. Hurrah! Let's go check it out.